everyone and welcome back to my channel so if you didn't already guess from some of my previous video i'm indeed a really big fan of movies and animated movies so today's character is from a fantastic movie called perfect blue and yes in the background there is another film from satoshi Kon because i didn't have the dvd of perfect blue so today we are going to create Mima, the protagonist from the first movie of a fantastic director that, as I said before, is called Satoshi Kon, that unfortunately lived us really soon but left all amazing and super interesting movies like this one, that is personally my favorite with Paprika as a close runner-up. Perfect Blue and all the movies from this artist are the representation that animated films are obviously not only for children and sometimes can be addressed only to an adult audience. Perfect Blue is in fact a deep and complicated psychological thriller that deals with the perception of ourselves that we have and think other have of us. And this message is even more powerful with the internet that is basically able to give a certain and distorted depiction of ourselves to other through social medias. And in addition to that, it is also a big critic on Asian entertainment system and the phenomenon of idols in general, that I feel really close as a really big fan of BTS and other groups. I really love them as persons and full-rounded artists, but I hate the lifestyle they have to live, with all the imposition they have many times only to give a certain image to some fans that are really borderline obsessed with the idea they created of someone that is just a human being. Okay, so I hope my analysis wasn't too bad, but it is a pretty complicated and deep movie that I think I have to watch a lot of other times to fully understand. So if you want to see a really good analysis, go watch these really interesting videos. But now let's start doing our Mima in her idol look, or should I say her evil alter ego? Firstly, I had to find the right doll to use as a base, so I started searching in my box of dolls for repaint. Later. And at the end I took three different doll parts. Why three? Because I lose this Raven Queen body, but it unfortunately doesn't have a neck peg. So I let to take it from this Raven Queen head. And I'll also use this Drocolora head and ends. Ok, now that we took the useful parts and created a little Frankenstein, let's begin the neck pack surgery. I firstly heated the doll head with an air dryer to make the remotion easier. Now I'm cutting to the right length a piece of thick wire and I stuck it in the neck hole making sure it is really snug. the wire in place with some super glue and as you can see it is perfectly in place and it can move around. Now let's work on the head. So because at the end Draculora's head was not really similar to Mima's I decided to send it to change a bit the overall shape. And there is the difference with the normal Draculora sculpt. Then I also made the ears less vampire-like by cutting the top part with my exacto knife. But the head and the body are clearly in different colors, so let's solve it with some acrylic paint. And also color the sculpt for the future hair. Talking about the hair, let's make it with some acrylic yarn. So, as always, I'm cutting a lot of strands, then I binded them on a knitting needle, brushed them with a pet brush, and straightened them with a nail straightener to obtain a lot of fluffy hair, but for now we'll take just a bit of them, because we are using them to remove the part and the center of the hairline. So I'm 
taking a nail drill and I'm replacing the tip with this thing. It is a needle cutted at an angle that will grab the hairs. Now I'm making some holes in the part I'm gonna reboot, because otherwise the needle will probably break. To do a more precise job on the hairline, I'm firstly drawing it with a marker. And because the part will take more hairs, I'm using this majestic needle to make the holes. So to reroot, I'm taking just a little bit of hair and sliding the needle to get them. Then I simply push them in the holes I made before. And I redo these thousands of times. So I decided to root because I didn't know how to make a widow's peak with the yarn technique, but because we're rooting is quite time consuming, I decided to do that only on the focal parts. So as you can see for the part, I had to do two lines of hair by rerouting twice the same holes, because otherwise the sculpt would have been visible. After we are done with the part, we do the hairline. And to set everything in place, we pour some glue in the head and spread it really well to cover all the plugs. And after the glue has dried, we connect the head to the body. For the clothes I was really excited because lately I'm only doing suits or male clothing in general, but she has a super cute dress. So also here I'm taking a box, in this case my clothes and accessories box, because I was looking for this apple white dress that has a similar shape to what I'm gonna do, so I took it apart to be able to make some patterns. And they'll use all these beautiful things. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die of joy for all this pink. <laughs> and let me say, finding this freaking silk in the white color was impossible. At the end, I had to buy like 10 meters for 10 euros. But looking at the other option, I think I made a good decision because the other fabric was in a completely wrong color. So I'm starting with the top part of the dress by gluing down the hem. And as you can see in this curved part I did many cuts to help myself. Then I sewed these darts and connected the three pieces. For the skirt I took a long piece in the same fabric and sewed it on the top by changing the setting of my machine to a wider type of stitch. So now, by pulling one of the threads, I'm able to gather the skirt. And I'm doing this also for the other parts of the skirt. So now we connect the first fuchsia strip and the second one and connect the top to the skirt. And I did this by hand because I wanted to be precise and it was kinda thick because of all the fabric layers, so I was really worried my machine could break. And in fact because of all the fabric this part didn't want to lay down, so I had to bring my most powerful tool, the iron. And now we sew close the skirt part. And for the closure I used a hook and a snap button. Then 
then I took a lace that I firstly tried together with the machine as the pieces of fabric from before, but because it was clearly a stupid idea, I had to do it by hand. And then I attach it on the neckline. Now I'm taking this strip of fabric and closing it. I flipped it and gather it in the center like so to create a bow. And I covered the ugly center part with a piece of ribbon. And added this cute oversized bow on the back of the dress. Now I'm gluing the straps. And crisscrossing them on the back. Then I glue some little bows on the shoulders to really finish the dress. And when the dress is done, we have to do the other accessories. So I took this stretchy fabric in light pink and wrapped it on the arms and sewed it close. Then I flipped it to obtain the upper part of the gloves. I did the same for the stocking, but before flipping them I attached on the top the same gather ribbon I used before on the neckline. And here are the gloves and the stockings. Then to do the headband I cut the basic shape on cardboard and glued on the back a piece of wire to be able to shape it as I want. Then I covered it with the same silk as before. And then I also added this little bow I made from the usual ribbon. And to finish her outfit I'm gonna create her shoes will be a new thing for me because I had to completely do them from scratch. So firstly I protected the stockings with some masking tape. Then I glued a piece of cardboard on the base of the feet. And cut it to shape to create the base of the sole. I created the straps with some laces. this piece of fabric on the back then I removed it and added the pin to create a base for the heels now I'm taking some two parts epoxy sculpt that is an air drying and super strong clay and I'm using it to sculpt the soles and give a better shape to the heels And remember to use a lot of water to smooth all the lumpy parts of the clay. When the shape is right, I'm gonna paint the inside and ribbon that got a little dirty from the clay with some shiny paint. And I'll do the soles with the plain version of the same color. And we'll finish them by adding some bows. What a big news in this video! Basically, I'm adding bows everywhere! <laughs> Let's start the face up with my beautiful wand I made with a blister of vitamins. And no, don't ask me how it was possible! <laughs> but firstly, I'm protecting the hair with some scrap fabric. Then I applied some Liquitex matte varnish diluted with water with a sponge as a sealant. Firstly, I am applying some chalk pastas to blush her and give some colors to the lips. 
and if it was too harsh I toned it a little bit with an eating eraser. Then I started painting with acrylics that are the material I basically use to do the main part of my face ups and I firstly do the sclera with white. Then I color the eyes in brown. and added some color variation with a line of red. Then I did the lash line in black. definitely wasn't precise, I took some skin color paint to refine everything, an advantage if you have to change your dot skin color. And uh, then I did a really super ultra fine line to do the eyelid. And obviously I messed up a lot and have to cancel my errors every time. Then, also with black, I did the pupils. Because without them she's kinda creepy, now I'm doing the eyebrows in brown. Then I did other super fine details to the eyes and because they are super thin I messed quite a lot also there. <laughs> drawing a lot of lashes but they were kind of fun to do and not so difficult strangely to make the eyebrows more realistic and bushy I painted some thin thin hairs in brown and with the skin color and even if it was pretty different for me I quite like how they turned out. I also refined the lips that were a little bit on the bigger side with some skin color paint and then I did some highlight with some white paint. Then I glossed the lips with some varnish and painted some teeth as a last thing to make it look as the mouth was open. And after removing all the protection, it is our face up done. And I hope I managed to do a specific, sad and melancholy look that she has many times in the movies. And because we are still talking about painting, I'm ending this part that I really didn't know how to insert so basically I took some gouache paint and created some blood on the face and hands to recreate a specific sheen from the movie. And I used gouache specifically because it can be removed with water and in fact I wanted to remove it after but you see from the shooting that I liked it so much that I kept the blood stained and I don't know if I will remove it. <laughs> Now 
the only thing left to do is finish her hair. So we'll take all the hair from before and we'll create some wefts with glue. Then we'll start gluing them onto the doll head using some hot glue. And I'm starting from the bottom and going up. But firstly I cut them to the right land layer by layer, like here where I'm creating the base for the sideburns. Then I cut the main hair part and feathering the ends out. Then I kept gluing and gluing and cutting for every layer the sideburn and the main hair. I hope my explanation wasn't too bad, but basically 18% of time I really don't know what I'm doing and I think I really can be crowned the messiest person in doing doll's hair, also with this setting and my beautiful shots. <laughs> Now I'm gluing the really last hair really snug to the part. And when I'm done gluing, I evenly separated to the right and to the left the strands that create the part. And to really set the hair flat and comb it well, I'm using a slightly wet toothbrush. And I also flatten them even more with a knitted knife. And you see that I neglected for all this time a really important part, so it is finally time to cut the bang. And because I wanted a really messy look, I'm doing a lot of vertical and deep cuts. And because it is a kind of uh, bouncy type of bang, I'm making that effect with the knitted crochet. And now the only thing left to do is pull the end of the hair. And I'm using the other side of my exacto knife because it is the only cylindric things in metal that I have. And here is the final hairstyle. So we can finally remove this hairdresser cape kind of thing and add all the other accessories. And after we also added the headband, here is our beloved and sweet idol from the group Cham, Mima. from such a fantastic movie from a magnificent director as Satoshi Kon was. And because it isn't super famous or mainstream, I'm glad that I maybe make some of you know it. And I'm also happy I was finally able to make a super cutesy dress. And I think it didn't turn out too bad in the end. Let me 
me know, did you already know Perfect Blue? And if you do, what are your thoughts on this super interesting and complicated story? But obviously I also want to know what you think of my Mima doll. Have a nice day and bye!